a lot of people have issues with signing their paintings, small issues, but important issues about signing their painting. And a lot of artists make mistakes about how they do it. So we're gonna run through the seven most common mistakes that artists make when they sign their paintings and what we should be doing instead. The first mistake that some artists do is not saying signing their painting at all. Now, um, a lot of early artists, you know, emerging artists or amateur artists or people who are, are starting out don't sign their paintings for two reasons. One is they don't have confidence and they feel, you know, I don't really want to sign yet. I'm not sure they're good enough. And the other reason they don't sign is that they can't finish or they, they feel it maybe isn't finished yet. So what I kind of want to say with that is that there's two reasons why you should sign your painting, every painting. One is it forces you to finish it. And there has to be a point at which the painting is done. And at that point, when you sign it, even you can still go back to a painting when it has been signed, but it marks the painting as finished. There's two other really important reasons why you should always sign your painting. First of all, it identifies the painting as yours. You know, you might go on to be a very famous artist and uh, identifying your painting is very important, but it just may be that your painting, you know, ends up going to someone or being sold or, or wherever and your mark identifies it as your painting, you know? And the third is that it honours your work when you sign it. And we need to do lots of more of honouring our work. It does matter whether you sign it or not, and it does matter how you sign it. Your painting is all of a piece, it's all of a whole. And your mark, if you like, your signature, whatever it is, needs to be part of that whole. It needs to work with the piece and be of the piece rather than being discordant or being or distracting. Um, so it needs as a sort of guiding, overall guiding rule. So the first mistake is not, not signing your painting at all. And really I want to encourage you to sign your finished painting, to identify it as yours and to honor the work and to finish the piece and have it signed. So the next big mistake or mistake that artists commonly make when they are signing their painting is not signing the actual painting itself. So a lot of artists don't like to sign the actual painting itself and they sign the back. Now the difficulty with that is that there's a couple of ways of doing that. You might sign it um, on the canvas itself or on the frame of the canvas. And the problem with that, although it actually is a very good idea because it can never be removed, it, it does mean it will be covered usually by the frame or the back of the frame. It depends on the kind of frame that you use. Some, some are open, but a lot of them are closed over at the back. And so you can't see the information inside. The other is that if you put a sticker on the back, uh, stickers fall off. You know, they do eventually fall off, whether they're stuck on with tape or whether they're with glue or whatever, they, they will fall off in the end. But the usual place, and I'll come back to what to put on the back, but the usual place to put your mark, to put your identifying mark, is on the bottom right hand corner of your painting, on the front, where it can be seen without taking it off the wall and, and rummaging around. So really, that's where everybody goes to look. That's the place where everybody knows to look for the signature of the artist is on the bottom right hand corner. Now, nobody's gonna die if you don't put it on the bottom right hand corner. There are times when I don't put it on the bottom right hand corner because it doesn't really suit the painting or whatever is going on with the painting, there isn't maybe room there or whatever and I'll have to put it on the other side or slightly above, you know. If they're looking for it, they're gonna find it. It's not the end of the world, but that's the usual place where people will look um, and find it. Now, I talked about putting stuff on the back of your painting. So that brings me to the third um, sort of mistake that, that we make as artists, and that is not including key information on your piece um, for buyers and for sellers and for other people. Not including key information is the third. So what do you need to include and what do you, where do you need to put it? So we've already established that you're going to put your signature on the bottom right hand corner of the painting. So on the back of the painting, either on the frame, 
uh, on the wooden part of the the canvas if you're not covering the back or on um, if it if you are covering the back if you cover the the painting the back of the frame across then on that written in marker i use a sharpie or something like that um you want your full name okay which per the person can read um you want the title of the painting that's kind of like an optional extra but i like to do that the inventory or reference number if you use a system like that and the year of completion now what i do is i sign with my signature on the front of the painting and i put my which is row and then on the back of the painting i put my full signature which is roshino farrell i put the name of the painting and that's important, I'll tell you why in one minute. And then I put the year that it was finished or, and, and the month usually that it left me. No. Now it's important you put the name in the painting. I have had paintings that went to a gallery, were sold to a client, a customer, who put it up on their wall and then at some point or other in its history, they sold it through an auction house, an art auction house. And it turns up under another name. If if it doesn't have its name on the back because the owner forgets what name you gave it and if it's easier to track those things you know uh, sometimes people have just run me up and said hey do you know one of your paintings is in such and such an auction and i'll be able to go and check it but it makes it much more difficult if the painting name has changed they just made up a name because I couldn't remember what it was so write the name on the back it's easier to track it when it comes back to you when it goes to somebody else you know it, you, you have some kind of continuity of knowing what it is and where it is and all of that the next thing that um, artists are have a problem with sometimes is being consistent now at the beginning we're all trying to figure out our way we're all trying to figure out our voice we're all trying to figure out what we're doing how what our style is and it, the same goes for our signature it kind of takes a while for that to come together and become your mark and the thing about that is that that's absolutely fine but eventually you want to settle on something that everybody recognizes as you because if you sign your name with your initials in block letters for a year and then you change your mind and you do a scrolly script and then you do a stamp and then you do you know you go into prince mode and you have a symbol and um, you know you kind of lose the value of it being your mark and people then don't know um, who it is you know especially if it's a symbol and it keeps changing so yes you know take a bit of time to figure out what what it is and it will come up and it'll become the thing that you use and then um, stick with that otherwise it just gets very confusing now the fifth um, mistake that artists commonly make when signing their paintings is choosing the wrong um, mark for you so um, it doesn't really matter what your mark is and if you go and look i have some pictures on that blog post from from different artists and they're as different as the artists are but it should it should be like your style it should come out of you it should be an expression it should be an extension of who you are um so you want to spend a little bit of time on that you know especially at the beginning when you're still finding that it, it will come you don't really have to force it too much but do give it some consideration and then allow your your signature to develop and mine in fact kind of um was like a wayward child that developed itself really and i just eventually had to accept it and that is that um my signature that i use to sign my paintings is row and Ro is the name that my friends and family call me. So my initials are R-O-F, Roshino Farley. And so I kind of thought that that was a little bit too like personal to use as my general mark and that I should use Roshino Farrell. It didn't really work. It just didn't work for me. And in the end, Ro is the thing that I sign when I sign cards and I sign, you know, it, it just, my work was so personal to me that it didn't feel right to go with the sort of formal. And I'll, I'll ex there's a couple of things we can do, right? One is you can use your, your initials, you know? So if you're Susan Tatterfield, you're going to be ST okay so that that that's fine um initials usually it's your just your your first and your christian name although some people will put in another name that's better to identify them 
it's the easiest to execute and it's super clear and it's small and it's it's just easy to do and so it's easily identifiably as you you know um especially if you put in an extra uh, a symbol but you've got to remember this is going on an original piece of art so just your initials is enough with the original piece of art to identify it as you which is fine and it's it works and you can stylize your signature you can make it look whatever way you want to and you've been signing it since you know you were you know I don't know whatever age you were uh, when you started using your initials to carve into things you shouldn't have been carving into Another way to go is to use a stylized mark. So I know a lot of artists who do this, maybe it's kind of come from their signature and now, you know, something goes into something else and there's a block and there's a thing or there's a, you know, whatever. And um, that can work really well. It can be very graphically interesting and it can look really smart, you know. Disadvantage is that will people know who you are if your stamp is a box and a chicken or a, or a circle and a two marks to sort of sort of nod and a wink to an O and a H, you know? It, it, will they know it's an O and a H and that your name is Orla Halligan or, you know, whatever. So the disadvantage of a stylized mark is that it isn't as identifiable. Now, lots of Famous artists have used that approach and it hasn't harmed their careers. But for those of you who are looking to make a living, in, even in a small way, um, being identifiable is important. Um, the next way of doing it is to use block capitals and you'll see a lot of artists who do this. I did this at the beginning, but my name is Roisin O'Farrell. <laughs> That's a lot of letters and I have accents which I I, I have, uh, they're, well they're not accents, they're fathers in the Irish language. Now if you're doing a little 8x8 eight eight painting and you've got to get all those letters in and you've got to write them, um, it's, it can turn into a mess and it can also distract because it's just like this big type at the bottom of your, your, um, of your painting. So um, they are, from an identifiability point of view, really, really great if you can do it clearly because that's who you are, it's your name, and they'll be able to find you really easily. But they they're, can be pretty unesthetic. So, you know, you have to make a decision. If you're going to do that, is it going to A, work? Is it going to be practical? And B, is it going to look well? Is it going to work with your paintings as a whole? Um, and generally, you know, in a very big painting, that mightn't be such a problem, whereas in a very small painting, um, that could be a problem, especially with a name like mine. So another thing to mention at that point is, uh, as a rule of thumb, to use the media that you're using for the painting to sign your painting. So if it's a pencil drawing, you'll use a pencil. If it's an ink drawing, you'll use ink. If it's an oil painting, you'll use oil. Um, if you're, you know, acrylic, it's acrylic, watercolor, it's acrylic, watercolor. So you use the media that you are completing the piece in to sign your work. To the next mistake that we make as artists is using the wrong tool and this is really super common okay and um, depending on what you're doing you will use the appropriate tool so we'll start with impasto which is how i paint lots of paint lots of texture and i use this fella here which is a wipeout tool i've also heard it called a camper tool and you can get those on amazon you can get them in your local uh, art store if you go to my website on the uh, blog there's the essential tools blog post and there's a link to getting these they are not very expensive you see it's got that sharp t tip at the top and it's got this slightly less sharp rounded tip at this end so you use it like a pen and you scrape into the paint I find with impasto paint it works really well just to do that so I, I usually orchestrate and orchestrate a little extra paint in the bottom right hand corner a nice swathe of texture and then I'll just write my signature into that. If um, the canvas is a different tech, different color to the paint then the signature will show just by doing that. If they're very similar you won't really see it and then what I will do is I will go into that mark that I have left with a brush and I'll use a brush something like this one here, which is a, a filbert rounded fine tip brush. 
and you can just draw into your signature and that'll give you a definition by using the Wi-Fi tool and then you can put some color into it so it can see so that's a really good way of doing it another is um, if you are painting in acrylic acrylic dries fast and then you can use a small brush like this to um, to paint in acrylic over it or possibly even smaller than that one I would suggest and just you know make sure the paint is not too thick so it flows well and then you can do a nice sort of a scripted effect uh, with a brush um, onto acrylic so if you're if you are painting in oils you're you should be signing while the painting is still wet and then that will allow you a to scrape into the paint if that's what you want to do or to to allow the painting to move with your brush if you sign a painting that's completely dry an oil painting that's completely dry and um, it will look like it's put on top and the, the the difficulty with that is that and also with paintings that have been varnished and then signed is that you know when you're rich and famous and uh, an artist selling in Christie's they may worry that the piece has been forged because um, that's a big sign of a forged piece is the signature over the varnish later that it was done afterwards so generally speaking as good practice you do it before the painting is wet or dry and you do it before it's varnished anyway okay for limited edition prints for um you always sign on the print not on the mat or the mount as we say here um, because the mount is the thing that can be changed right so somebody decides to that the, the it's getting a bit you know needs a new frame they'll usually put a new mount on at the same time um, or if the mount gets dirty they'll put a new mount on but they'll keep the print um, so if your signature and it's a signed limited edition print the value is in the fact that you have signed this piece yourself and if you signed it on the mount then the mount is gone so with the limited edition print again bottom right hand corner is where people look for your signature so you know let's go with that and you write the title of the print on the bottom left so you'll have the title of the print on the bottom left on the right hand side on the bottom you'll have your signature and if it's a limited edition print you will also have a little uh, number over a line like a percentage like a like a fraction and the top is the the bottom is the number in the edition and the top is the, the numbered edition of that particular print so if you have a limited edition of 50 and this one is the 10th it'll be 10 over 50 and you put that usually beside your signature that's what I do right um, so that is our six. So our final mistake, common mistake that artists make when they're signing their paintings is um, that they make the mark too big. And that's the equivalent of shouting in texts with capital letters. You know, it, it dominates and it, it sort of breaks that guiding rule of that it shouldn't distract and it shouldn't, um, it shouldn't be at odds with the whole piece. You want it to be seen if somebody is looking for it but if they're looking for it they know where to go it'll be on the bottom right hand corner if they have to go down and look for it that's fine but it shouldn't scream out of them you know they should be able to stand back at a piece and the first thing they see should not be the signature you know that really should be part of the whole but notice later in the process rather than you know bang in your face so to recap the procedure is one always sign your paintings um, it marks it as complete it honors the work in a, and it identifies it as yours Two, sign in the medium of the painting or the media of the painting while the painting is still wet particularly if it's oil and before varnishing Three, as a rule, sign your mark, your initials, your signature or your design in the bottom right hand corner of your painting. Four, write your full name, the title of the painting, the year and any inventory or, or reference that you have for it on the back of the frame in a permanent marker, not a sticker stuck on, but just write it on the back of the frame where it can't disappear, get unstuck. Your mark should be unique to you. It should be as unique as your own style. It should be practical to execute. Um, it should clearly identify who, to the viewer who the artist is. It should complement the painting and not distract from the painting. 
So that is that for today. Let me know how you get on with signing. Bye.